Welcome to this presentation on the acute abdomen. We are going to look at diagnosing the acute abdomen by thinking anatomically and in a systems-based approach. Remember, this is a basic overview and only some of the more common conditions will be mentioned in basic detail. When someone presents with an acute abdomen, pain will usually be present, so this is often a good place to start. The first step is to determine the site of the pain and if it migrates anywhere. Use the Socrates mnemonic to find out as much as you can about the pain. It is one of the most invaluable tools when clocking a patient. Once you know about the pain, you can start thinking about what pathology could be occurring, keeping in mind what conditions cause pain where. This can help to form a differential diagnosis, but we need to look at symptoms other than pain to help us narrow our differential. We will start by looking at the gastrointestinal system we have discussed appendicitis, so we'll not mention it here. If the patient complains of symptoms related to the bowels, such as constipation or diarrhea, we can consider a gastrointestinal cause. Abdominal pain in the lower quadrants could be a symptom of inflammatory bowel disease. Pain in either or both quadrants is more likely to be Crohn's disease, as this can affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract. Pain in the lower left quadrant is more likely to be ulcerative colitis, as this tends to affect the distal colon and rectum. The other common symptom in inflammatory bowel disease is diarrhoea, which tends to be bloody in ulcerative colitis. During severe attacks, constitutional symptoms such as fever, malaise, anorexia and weight loss are often present. Inflammatory bowel disease can be confirmed by sigmoidoscopy. Diverticulitis can cause abdominal pain in any of the lower quadrants and in the periumbilical region. It usually presents with vague abdominal symptoms of colicky pain, nausea and signs of infection. Meckel's diverticulitis is effectively intestinal obstruction, so can cause pain, vomiting and constipation in any part of the abdomen. If the pain is in the lower right quadrant, it can mimic appendicitis, so should be considered as a differential diagnosis. Abdominal colicky pain with vomiting, constipation and abdominal distension are cardinal signs of bowel obstruction. Active tinkling bowel sounds are also present on examination. Note the mnemonic CHAT for common causes of bowel obstruction. Constipation, hernias, adhesions and tumours. An abdominal x-ray is usually required to see where the obstruction is located. This picture shows large bowel obstruction. The clue is that the haustra do not extend all the way across the lumen's width. This x-ray shows small bowel obstruction where the valvuli coniventes do cross the whole width. And this picture shows sigmoid volvulus. The dilated bowel is often described as a coffee bean. Upper abdominal or epigastric pain related to eating or alcohol, or what the patient may call heartburn, could be a sign of gastroesophageal reflux disease or a peptic ulcer. The patient may also complain of nausea and vomiting. Duodenal ulcers are four times as common as gastric ulcers. Most peptic ulcers are caused by Helicobacter pylori and can be eradicated with antibiotics. If the patient is suffering from diarrhoea and or vomiting, along with abdominal discomfort, then this may be gastroenteritis caused by one of many pathogens, such as Campylobacter or Salmonella. Signs of infection may also be present. A full history should be taken relating to travel, food eaten, and if they have been in contact with anyone with a similar illness. A potentially fatal cause of an acute abdomen that may require surgery is perforation. Perforation of an ulcer or inflamed appendix, diverticulum or bowel can lead to a generalized peritonitis. Signs of shock, prostration, absent bowel sounds and abdominal rigidity may be present. In perforation an erect chest x-ray may show gas under the diaphragm. 
Perforation requires immediate shock management and surgery to fix the perforation. If there are signs of shock but the perforation is not suspected, it may be a rupture of an organ, for example a spleen, rupture of an ectopic pregnancy, or a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm. The latter presents with severe central abdominal pain that may radiate to the back or towards the groin and an expansile pulsing mass. If a patient has pain in the right upper quadrant or epigastrium, liver, biliary and pancreatic pathology should be considered within the differential. Cholecystitis and biliary colic both present with constant right upper quadrant pain, which can refer to the right shoulder tip and even to the chest. The main difference between the two is that cholecystitis has an inflammatory component. The pain is often exacerbated by fatty foods and vomiting or nausea may be present. The following video shows how to elicit Murphy's sign, a sign of an inflamed gallbladder, such as may be seen in cholecystitis. Ask your patient to breathe out deeply, then place the edge of your hand under the right lower rib edge and then ask them to inhale deeply. A positive test will elicit pain as the inflamed gallbladder descends against your hand. If a stone is compacted in the common bile duct, then this can cause an obstructive jaundice. Acute pancreatitis can present with epigastric or central abdominal pain that may radiate to the back and vomiting is often prominent. Tachycardia, fever, jaundice, signs of shock, rigid abdomen and grey turners or Cullen sign may be seen. The latter two are signs of retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Over two thirds of the cases of acute pancreatitis are caused by either gallstones or alcohol. Pain in the right upper quadrant with or without jaundice could be a sign of hepatitis. However, hepatitis usually presents more generally with fever, malaise, anorexia, nausea, arthralgia and urticaria. On examination, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly and lymphadenopathy may be found. If hepatitis is suspected, a full history must be taken, covering medical history, occupation, travel, dietary history, sexual activity, drug abuse, family history and if they have had vaccinations against hepatitis. The diagnosis can be confirmed by viral serology. The genitourinary system, including the kidneys, can be the cause of an acute abdomen. Suspect these whenever there is abdominal pain and urinary symptoms, such as dysuria, pain on urinating, anuria, passing no urine, hematuria, blood in urine, or proteinuria, protein in the urine. This is usually albumin and can be detected by a urine dipstick, but microalbuminuria cannot. Loin to groin pain or renal colic Excruciating spasms of pain are a telltale sign of renal stones. Obstruction higher up may cause pain that will look like appendicitis, whereas lower down the pain may radiate to the genitalia. This x-ray shows a renal stone stuck in the left ureter. Urinary tract infections can occur with renal stones or without, causing pyelonephritis, inflammation of the renal pelvis, most likely manifesting in loin pain can also cause urethritis, inflammation of the urethra, or cystitis, inflammation of the bladder, which often presents with suprapubic pain. In women, lower abdominal pain could be a gynecological problem, such as pelvic inflammatory disease. This is a general term for inflammation of the fallopian tubes, uterus, and ovaries. It is often a complication of some sexually transmitted infections, such as chlamydia and gonorrhea. It can result in complications such as infertility, abscess formation and ectopic pregnancy. It is for this reason that every woman of childbearing age with lower abdominal pain should have a pregnancy test. In males, pain in the lower abdomen associated with severe pain in one testy is highly likely to be testicular torsion. This is an emergency and requires surgery urgently to avoid losing the testy.
So we have covered the main pathologies in the acute abdomen, but this is by no means an exhaustive tutorial. There are many other diseases that can cause an acute abdomen. Cardiac pain can sometimes present as epigastric pain, with patients confusing it for acid reflux. Pneumonia can cause pain in the upper abdomen. And besides these, there are a whole host of other diseases that can cause abdominal pathology. Another useful tool is the surgical sieve, the mnemonic Vindicate. Use this to aid your differential diagnosis. When using it, rule out the unlikely causes to narrow your differential.